Throughout the world, all cultures and faiths have their own ceremonies. Many Aboriginal people still perform traditional ceremonies today. Smudging is a ceremony where sweetgrass, sage, fungus or cedar is lit and people cleanse their bodies, minds and spirit with the smoke. During a fasting ceremony, a person will camp alone outdoors on a spiritual journey for days without food and water. Another example of a ceremony is a tobacco offering. Say a little prayer, we'll offer the river for protection. You are Syrian, this monazitan, a bonipi, a boya, Kawe and get thrown on, Kawe Mitoe Arkin Peak, Kawe Brasumwa, Brunch, Jemma Stahai, Gimanachi, Tahamampe. It was always a, a moment in time when our people would uh, take the time to make that prayer, that uh, giving thanks for for this beautiful water we are given, this gift. For the Blackfoot, we honor, and in ceremony, it is very realistic to honor and acknowledge what gives us life. I always come back to that. You know, it is in our ceremonies, it is in our language, it is in our stories. That we need to be wisely aware of not just what we see, but what we don't see. That ultimately is our journey of knowledge seeking, is to be wisely aware of where you are and who you are. Aboriginal children were forced by the federal government to attend residential schools from as far back as 1831 to as recently as 1996. The Canadian government wanted to Christianize Indians and assimilate them into Canadian culture. The goal was to remove them from their land so that the European settlers could use the land for farming, building railways, cities and towns. This was the junior boys' dormitory. And I would be staring at the ceiling all night, really lonely. I was lonely for my parents, my grandparents, because my home is just over here. And I'd miss them so terribly. And so this, what was our dorm, really represented that disjointedness. I learned a little bit about reading and writing, but majority of it is to survive that system. How to steal, cheat, manipulate, fight, everything, you know, just to survive. That these places were intended to destroy that knowledge by taking the child out of the family and placing them in these schools. But uh, we need to keep trying to teach our language I always say, like, we, don't, we can't afford to lose our language, because if we lose our language, we lose our ceremonies. Even though the residential schools did a lot of damage, indigenous knowledge still exists. Ceremonies are practiced and languages spoken. Today's youth still have the opportunity to attend ceremony and learn about who they are and where they come from. This is knowledge that the elders are able to pass on to the next generation. The responsibility is now with the youth to pick up these teachings and carry them into the future. Our sun dance was not stopped. And that says something. And I owe 
a debt of gratitude to those people that kept our ways going. They were under tremendous pressure to capitulate and Christianize. They didn't. Because they didn't, I got to experience, in spite of being here, I got to return to who I am. And so are my kids, and so are my grandchildren. I really thank the elders, and I want to encourage the young people uh, to go back and, and, and try and figure out what they want out of life. You know, find themselves, that spirit in them that feels strong about who they are. That the young people be educated to look at the world in their own worldview our teachings of how important they are to keep this world in balance. For me, uh, when they learn more about their culture, the history of the culture, I think then the young people will begin to see the world's difference.